So how do you review a tripod? Well, let's focus on these three areas. The build quality, what's in the box, and usability. Given the price and that this tripod is from a relatively unknown brand, I had certain expectations when accepting to review this tripod. I thought these red details looked a bit cheap and I also thought they were made from plastic. I had concerns about these twist locks since I usually prefer levers. And I was also somewhat skeptical about these connections and how they can be used for different scenarios. But throw out any concerns you might have about the build quality. It's a lot better than I first thought. And I'm not just saying that because I got this tripod for free to review. If it was crap, I would say so. I have no ties to Manbilly and I'm too old to stand here and lie about some random product. Anyway, back to the build quality. These red details that I thought might be made from plastic, they're made of metal. In fact, almost everything is metal, apart from some of these knobs. The insides of the knobs are of course made of metal. This grip is made from high quality rubber and not some cheap piece of foam. And the rubber on these twist locks also feels nice to the hands. The legs are somewhat thicker than normal, which adds to the stability. Stability is part of the reason why I accepted to review this tripod. I got rid of a Manfrotto tripod a couple of years back in favor for more travel friendly tripods. But I miss having something more heavy duty for filming indoors or on set with heavier cameras than this point and shoot. And I think there even is a use case for filming outdoors when you need extra stability when using longer lenses. Perhaps it will work well with camera sliders too but I haven't tested that, so I cannot confirm it. There is some weight to the tripod, which further improves the stability and everything feels reassuring and well put together. Don't get me wrong, it's not a satchel, but for the money, I think you will have to look very hard to get the sturdier tripod. Manbilly seems to ship some extra pieces with the products, which is something that should not go unnoticed. Just look at this medium sized ball head alone. I reviewed something similar in a previous video and this feels just as nice to use. Then there's this thing called a platform that can be used for a laptop, extra lights or even an extra camera with a different focal length maybe. It's a nice to have kind of thing that also doubles as a counterweight. I used to have a teleprompter that required a separate stand, which means I had to use two tripods at once. With this solution, that wouldn't be necessary. There are two larger Arca Swiss type plates, which really was unexpected. In this quality, these alone are usually 20 euros each. Big plus with these two less screws, by the way, makes life so much easier. Then there's this counterweight holder, which might be necessary to use with heavier cameras, but for the most part you don't need it. Sometimes I use an extender like this to make the boom arm longer, and maybe then I see a need for a counterweight. There is also a very nice padded carrying bag included, which I actually appreciate more than I thought I would, even if it's only a bag. And lastly, there are these spikes that I probably never will use myself. But maybe they're useful if you wish to stab someone. The obvious trick with this tripod is of course this foldable arm. That makes overhead shots so much easier to set up. It's not the longest arm in the world, but it's long enough to comfortably use it for overheads. I have used an extension arm with this, which works fine with a somewhat better suited 3/8 inch standard attachment. The max length is 178 centimeters. With that included ball head, I would say it is a full height tripod. 
I'm 185 centimeters tall and I actually don't use the full height when filming myself, so it works for me at least. When folded, it's actually surprisingly small. It is not impossible to move it from one location to another. Back to that folding arm, because I want to use this tripod a bit differently than intended. I recently made this video and sometimes I do these product shots using a tripod. My thought is that it might be easier to do that with this one. So we need to dive deeper to these joints and find out how they actually work. Both axes are secured with rosette types of fixtures. Grooves that secure the angle in fixed increments. But when losing them completely, the pan and tilt action is actually surprisingly smooth. There is no dampening or any ball bearings here as far as I can tell. But the action is smooth enough to make these types of shots rather easily. I only need a few different types of movement to add some interest and perspective to my product review videos. And even though this isn't perfect, I will probably use this tripod for these shots since it's the most convenient way to get them. It doesn't wobble as much as my lighter tripods and the shots are good enough. I am more and more looking at my workflow and setting up a slider to get shots like this simply isn't worth the hassle compared to how quick it is to use a tripod instead. Maybe I would think differently for a paid commercial, but that's the exception. A perfect setup for me would be something with dampened horizontal and vertical axis, but I don't even know if such a tripod exists. Do I have any complaints then? Not really, but I do prefer levers instead of twist locks. With that said, they work very well and they are also very secure, unlike some of my other tripods with twist locks. And I also appreciate these combined 1838 screws that I have on other camera gear. That removes the need for adaptive screws that always seem to get lost. But on the other hand, this is sort of a heavy duty tripod so I understand why Manbilly went for the more durable standard. So what's my verdict then? It's a no-brainer really. It's a well-built versatile tripod that I have no trouble in recommending.